Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Jillian Graham. I am going to show you how to customize a Google Form header in this tutorial today. So here's a presentation file that I use for all of my Google Form headers that I have created so far. And I'll actually put this um, in the description, a link to it, so you can make a copy if you want to and just edit the ones that I have here. But I like to use these for Google Form headers because I can leave my kids little notes of encouragement or whatever and just create a nice little design for the top of the Google Form. So I have several different ones. Just this was kind of one that I used for a um, check in form when we first went to e learning in the spring. Um, sometimes I like to make them themed so this was a quiz on compound interest and um, so here I'm just throwing some money around and it I just made it fun um, giving them some tips on um, you know remembering to round correctly and all of that and then I just have different um, different designs in here again that you can use if you want to so you're going to create these pretty much the same way that you would as a virtual classroom or a header for Google Classroom. Um, but in for the Google Form header, there's no information like your class name and all of that that needs to stand out. So there's no um, dark overlay that you're going to have on a Google Form header because readability is not necessary. Now, obviously, you know, I'd use really nice contrasting colors on this so they can read it easily, but you don't have the issues that you do with Google Classroom and those headers. Um, these two down here are just a couple when I do like little scavenger hunt um, Google Forms, because a lot of my around the room activities I have made digital, um, and I have another video on that as well if you're interested. Um, but I just created a couple different fun themed headers, if you will. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm just going to start a new slide presentation. And I'm just going to do that by going to slides.new. And that will make a new Google slide presentation in my Google Drive. And the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to go to File and then go to Page Setup. and the page setup is going to be the same as what it would be for Google Classroom. But if you don't know what that is, I'm going to show you. So first what you want to do is change your page setup to custom. And then I like to put it in pixels. It's going to change it to the equivalent in inches. Um, but you do have to change your units first. So you can either um, write down what it is in inches. I'll show you both or just change it to pixels first and then it's going to be 1600 by 400 pixels okay. so 1600 by 400 pixels or in inches it's 16.67 inches by 4.17 inches so either way just make sure you change this to pixels first if you're going to do the 1600 400 All right, so we're going to hit apply all right, so now this is going to be the correct size for my Google Form header. I like to get rid of what's here by just clicking Layout and then selecting Blank. You could also select them and delete instead. So now I'm going to change my background. And um, because this is kind of a, a more, uh, it's a shorter slide, when you choose an image for your background, sometimes you're going to have to play with it a little bit and find an image that works well for this size slide because it's going to get stretched quite a bit. You don't want it looking real funky. So I'm going to choose an image. I'm going to go to Google Image Search. And um, when, you, when you do a Google Image Search within Google Slides, everything that comes up is already um, labeled for reuse. So you don't have to change any kind of uh, you don't have to change the, you don't have to go to tools like you would for Google image search and change the usage rights. Or you don't have to filter by usage rights. So I'm just going to type in wall 
and floor. And so that's going to give me um, lots of different backgrounds. But again, some of these may work well for this size slide and some may not. If you don't like how much it's stretched, then just, you know, redo it, pick a different one. Um, you can also go in and do your wall and your floor separately. But again, it's it's a stretched slide, so it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, I think this one's going to be a little bit stretched, but I'm going to try this one. Let's see what it looks like. So you can see how this is stretched quite a bit, the flooring is, but um, it's not really going to be a big deal once we put stuff on here. Okay. So I am going to now insert an image. I'm going to insert, let's just insert a couch. So I'm going to search the web. So I'm going to search couch with the word vector, because usually that gives me the most transparent results. And then just grab a couch that looks nice. We'll try this one. There we go. Now let's say that you actually, um, you find a couch that is not transparent, but you really want to use it. Um, so let me, so let's do this one. So this one has a background image and this one's white. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> it's like white on white. Um, but if you really want to use this couch, but it's not transparent, what you can do is you can right click and you can save this image to keep. And then from there, once it's in keep, it's an image. So now I can copy that image. So I just right clicked on it, copy image. I can actually open this up in Lunapic because I do have that extension. Um, but I'm going to show you with remove.bg if you're not familiar with Lunapic. And remove.bg is really simple. You just copy and paste into it. So I'm going to copy that image. I'm going to go to www.remove.bg. And I'm literally going to paste this in here. I'm just going to do control V on my keyboard. And actually it removed that background nicely. So I'm just going to keep that as is. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy the image. Now it's transparent. You could also download and then insert it using the insert menu, but I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste it back in here. I'm going to get rid of these. Delete, delete paste it back in and now I have a transparent couch and this one's fancy we'll keep this one okay so now I'm just gonna double click on this because there's so much space uh, extra space around this the, the blue box I'm gonna double click on it so that the lines turn black and then I'm gonna crop it down like that it's not really necessary but it, if I had anything else going on that would be getting in the way so we're just going to close that out. We'll crop it down. All right, so now let's say I want my Bitmoji sitting on the couch. So I'm going to go to my uh, Bitmoji extension. This is an extension of the app. So if you do want to insert your Bitmoji, you have to have the Bitmoji app. And then the Bitmoji Chrome extension connects to the app. So you change your outfit, change your Bitmoji in the app, and then it syncs with the extension as long as you're logged in with the same account information. So I'm going to grab, I mean, that's my recent one because I use her a lot, but to find a Bitmoji that's sitting, you just type sit. And then she's right here. Uh, but I don't want her facing that way. I want her facing the other direction. So I'm going to right click on her and I'm going to go to rotate, flip horizontally. She's also kind of got a lot of extra space. So just to show this again, I'm going to double click and crop her down a little bit just in case I put anything else on the couch. And then just kind of adjust her size a little bit smaller. Move her up. Okay. Then you can maybe add a pillow um, or whatever you want to do. Okay. And then um, I would include like some kind of white space. Um, let's just do a shape. So for this one, I just went to a little shape icon in the toolbar. 
And I'm going to go to this one with the rounded corners. We're just going to leave a little message for our students. And then to make this, um, I'm going to put the text, you can type text in the shape. I prefer to put a text box on top so I can control it a little bit better. So I'm just going to do a text box on here. And just say, good luck. Google, look at me. Oh my goodness. Google brain. <laughs> Good luck on your quiz. You know, and depending on what it is, don't forget to read the instructions for each section. Okay. And then I want that to fill up some more space. So I'm going to change the font. And if there's not one that you have in your list um, that you like to use, you can click on more fonts. Maybe you're looking for a specific one. So with this, I might use a display font, um, something fun. I mean, I don't know. I could spend hours looking at fonts in, in Google. <laughs> so we'll just do something that's that's bold, but easy, still easy to read. Okay. We're going to make it pretty big, too, so it'll be pretty easy to read anyway. And then I'm going to center it. Maybe change that. Okay. Now, on the box itself, I want to add a little dimension to that. So I'm going to make the border thicker. So I'm going to go to the border weight, make that a little bit thicker. You can change the colors too. Um, I'm going to shrink this couch down a little. It's taking up too much space. Okay, just move stuff around a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to give this box um, a drop shadow. So I'm going to go to these three dots right here. You can also right click on it and choose format options. We'll click on these three dots, click on format options. And then I'm going to go down here to drop shadow. I'm going to add a drop shadow. So once you click it, it selects this box and adds the drop shadow. Um, can't really see the drop shadow too well. So I'm going to change the distance on it, make it a little bit more exaggerated. And so now you can see there's that little um, shadow underneath there. And you can change the angle of the shadow and all the color and everything. So you can do what you want. Uh, speaking of color, let's say I wanted to recolor this couch. I personally love the color of this couch. But let's say you were trying to do some kind of theme here. You can click on any item and go to Format Options. And then go to Recolor. And there's lots of different options. Ooh, that's kind of pretty too. Oh, that was, that's nice. Um, and the recolor options are not always going to be the same. It's kind of dependent on the color scheme, what's happening in your slides. It's just almost kind of random. Not random, but um, you're not going to always have the colors that you want. Um, so you just it's just it's going to depend on the item and the color scheme that you have going on in the presentation okay all right so let's say that's all you wanted to do again you can do you can design this any which way um, but now let's see how I actually put this in my Google form so I'm going to go to file and you can name this of course too if you wanted to I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to download and I'm going to download this as an image I prefer PNG um, because that's lossless, so it's, that's going to be better than JPEG. Although you're not, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference, but um, I just always do PNG. So I'm going to download it as a PNG. So it downloaded to my computer. And now let's make a Google form. So forms.new, you can do that to just make a new Google form, or if you have one already, just open that file. 
but here is how you customize the header in a Google form. So you're going to click on this little um, art palette right here to customize your theme. And there's lots of different options. So you can um, change the color, the background color. I wouldn't do this until after you have your header set um, because those options may change and you may decide on different colors based on your header. So when you select choose an image, there's lots of built-in fun images um, in Google Slides so you have, or Google Forms. So you have all these different options over here. Um, but for uploading your own, just go to upload or you can go to photos if it's in your photos. Um, mine's just on my computer, so I'm going to upload. So I'm going to click on browse. And I just downloaded it. So if you go to your downloads, should be the first thing listed. And there it is. Okay. And you can see it's the perfect size. I don't need to do any cropping or anything. I'm just going to hit done. And then I'll see how that looks. Okay, so you can see it kind of coordinated the color of the form to um, the header, but I can also change it to um, a different theme color, a different background color if I wanted to. Um, and you can also change the font for your form. Um, so I wouldn't do anything that's uh, difficult to see. I prefer just the basic or even the formal um, font styles. But there you go. That's it. Um, it is now customized and ready to go. And again, with Google Forms, there's no class name or meet link or any information that needs to stand out on this. So there's no dark overlay. It looks great. So here's the view from a student perspective right there. So I hope that helps you add a little flair to your Google Forms, whether it's just a quick little attendance form for your students or an actual quiz or test. Um, it really makes it look nice and personalized. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.